Welcome to week three, personal financial management. Uh, today we're going to talk about risk management insurance. And instead of talking about insurance, what I want to talk about is risk management. And risk management is certain things could happen that could have a negative financial impact on you now and in the future. Okay. Um, the first is they, these things not only a financial impact, but they can impact your health, your quality of life, and the ability to generate income in the future. So we have events that can have a negative impact. So let's take a look at risk. We're not going to start with buying insurance because you don't really go buy insurance. What you do is you start with what's my risk? What's the risk we have? And how can I minimize the impact of that risk? There are three steps to the risk management process. And this doesn't matter whether you're an individual as, as you are right now, or if you're a major corporation, the same process occurs. Identify the risk. What is the risk you have? Second step, measure the potential impact of the risk. If the risk occurs, or if you're concerned about occurs, what's the potential impact? Then, how can you minimize each risk or protect yourself from that risk? We're going to look at a number of situations and in each situation we're going to walk through the step. What's the risk? What's the potential impact? And how can the risk be minimized? First situation, you have a car. Well, what's the risk? Well, the risk is you're involved in a car accident. And a lot of times it doesn't matter whose fault it is, but you can have physical injuries re resulting to you and to others. There could be property damage to your vehicle, other vehicles, other property. You could run into a signpost. You could run into somebody's front yard. You could run over somebody's bike. So there's the physical damage. So the property damage and then there's physical injuries. So distinguish between the two, physical and property. And you could be held liable because of your actions or inactions. Other person does not have insurance. Let's take a, a moment now and just look at this situation because anything can happen. that comes up and you say, well, what am I paying? Uh, insurance folks refer to this as a premium. A premium is what you pay to an insurance company for taking on your risk. They're taking on your risk. You have the obligation uh, for the risk, but they're taking it on. You're paying a premium. Premiums are often quoted for the policy term. Insurance is written for a term, three months, six months, nine months, a year. Insurance for autos generally does not go beyond one year. Oftentimes there's six month policies and then they have to be renewed, which gives the insurance company an out. If they don't like you, they don't like the way you behave, they can kick you out. But six months to a year. Um, so most of them are quoted in, in that. Uh, most insurance companies let you pay this premium monthly uh, because sometimes you can't come up with the full amount of the premium for the full year or the full term. Um, so it's the premium is what you're paying the insurance company. Now we're going to get into more detail of components of car insurance. The first thing is liability coverage. That protects you and any assets you may have, including your emergency fund, etc., from damages you cause to others. And 
it's expressed in they'll, you'll see two numbers right here 25 50 and that's twenty five thousand dollars per person fifty dollars per incident or accident that's the New York State minimum most people buy a hundred thousand dollars per person three hundred thousand per incident incident um, and that's the most common that people use now based on your assets and this depends on I mean when you're just starting out a hundred three hundred is, is probably just fine but if you have more assets and everybody in this group wants to be very successful as you're going to accumulate more assets what you usually buy is an umbrella insurance policy to cover everything beyond the limits for all policies so what you might do is this umbrella insurance often sold in million dollar increments that you might buy this 100 300 or 250 500 um, whatever you buy and then buy an umbrella of million two three million dollars to protect yourself so that's for liability protects you from damages you cause to others then there's what we call medical payment or personal injury protection PIP and that's the you know if you're in a car accident and this could be treatment medical treatment for the driver and any passengers it can cover medical but also can cover lost wages and rental cars not rental cars yeah, lost wages and it's often bought in one five ten twenty five fifty and a hundred thousand dollar increment it's relatively inexpensive so the difference between ten and a hundred is is dollars we're not talking a lot most people do end up with a hundred thousand dollars because of the the cost um, so that's the PIP personal injury protection next is property damage and property damage um, can include another thing but what we're talking about here it's for damages to someone else's property so you have been in a car accident it's your fault you've caused damage to somebody else well there's a state minimum and that's ten thousand dollars is the minimum you have to have in New York fifty thousand is the most common so that if you were involved in an auto accident and you damage somebody else's car if the car is worth twenty five thousand dollars and all you have is ten is what you required then you have a risk so if that car is destroyed the twenty five thousand dollar car you only have ten you can be held liable for that additional fifteen thousand and that's why fifty thousand covers most cars although we all know there's a lot more cars on the road today that are worth more than fifty thousand um, so you know you want to take a look at, at at that next piece is that that covered what was damage to other vehicles collision refers to damage caused to your vehicle okay um, and this is where the deductible is applied not necessarily you don't have a deductible when it comes to other people the damage that you may have caused to other people's property but this is where the deductible applies if you are not at fault your insurance company will probably pay you this and try to recover from the other person's insurance this is just a function of getting cars fixed and back on the road sooner than later now let's take a look at that on certain old cars do you need it cost versus a benefit so if you have an old junker that's worth fifteen hundred dollars you may find the insurance on that is five hundred a year and that doesn't make any sense at all um, now they may when there's an accident the insurance companies don't always have to make the repairs they can decide that the car is irreparable and do what's called they total the car and they will give you the fair market for value of the car in that age and that condition less the deductible okay so that may happen when you look at collision some insurance companies ref require you to get three estimates if you make a claim some of them require you to use their preferred providers um, there's something called an adjuster and generally what happens an adjuster is somebody who will look at your car and decide how much the insurance company is going to pay so you need to know that also collision insurance is not required in 
New York State. You don't have to have it. You're taking on the own risk with your, your own car. And as we said, if you have a loan or if you're leasing a car, insurance is going to be required and required you to cover that. And it depends, again, on the value of the, the car. Uh, but again, most people have that. Uh, 500 is the most common deductible today. Uh, I have a thousand. It saved me a fair amount of money each year, and I'm willing to take on that extra risk. Okay. So that's collision. Next piece is what we call comprehensive, and this is when there is a loss due to theft, damages other than collision, deer, fire, falling objects, etc. So this will cover your car. This comprehensive. Somebody steals it, a tree falls on it. We've all seen those commercials. Also included is windshield or glass breakage. Some of these are with or without deductible. Okay, And again, a lot of insurance companies uh, have uh, no deductible on the windshield, but you have to, they'll handle everything. You call them up, they'll have somebody come out and fix your windshield. A very common thing. Um, and again, it's not required in New York State, but most people do have it. Then the next component of auto insurance is uninsured and underinsured motorists. So that if you're in an accident and somebody doesn't have insurance or doesn't have enough, or it's a hit and run, this will provide benefits to you. Okay. It will also protect you if you are a pedestrian. Okay. Um, Twenty-five. 50 it's the state minimum and it's most common when the next one we're going to look at is bodily let's summarize what we have i was moving too fast components bodily injury and liability that's when you cause injuries to other because it's your fault in an accident second medical payments for personal injury protection property damage to other people's vehicles and or property Collision is about your vehicle, and it includes the deductible. Comprehensive is covers costs to your vehicle when something other than a collision has, including theft or fire or flood. And then uninsured motorist, that if you're involved in an uninsured motorist situation. Now, we're going to look at two things. We're actually going to do a quick review. Uh, sometimes if we go through it, you hear it from a different voice, might make more sense. And then we're going to say how to save money on your auto insurance. And that's situation one. So you just got your first car. And whether it's a brand new sports car or a gently used minivan, you're probably pretty proud of yourself. Auto insurance is a crucial part of owning a car. It may seem a bit confusing, but really it's not complicated at all. I'm Justin, your informed citizen, and I'm here to make sure you are covered. If you own and drive a car, the law says you have to have some form of auto insurance. How much and what type varies from state to state, but regardless of what the law says, you need to be insured because if you get into an accident, it can be very costly business. What exactly does auto insurance cover? Well, lots of things from vehicles to property to physical bodies. There are six types of coverages, some that are required and some that are optional. Let me break it down for you. If you injure someone in an auto accident, not only will you feel really bad about it, but you'll also be responsible for paying for their medical bills. That's where bodily injury liability comes into play. Now, you'll probably want to get more than the minimum required by state law, because if you get sued, you're going to need to be protected. Remember, some people in this country really love going to court. Of course, if you get in an accident, you might be the one who gets injured. So that's where you need personal injury coverage. This will cover your medical bills, lost wages, and sometimes even heaven forbid, funeral costs. Chances are, even if you avoid hurting yourself or someone else in the accident, the car you hit is probably a bit worse for wear. 
Property damage liability covers you for damage to another person's car or any other property you might have hit during your accident. This covers you for lamp posts, fences, stop signs, the broad side of a barn. Of course, if you've crashed into something or flipped your car over, your vehicle is the one that needs to be repaired. That's where collision coverage comes in handy. Then again, damage to your car may be caused by something other than crashing into another vehicle or an object. You've got to contend with fires, falling objects, missiles, explosions, earthquakes, hail, floods, vandalism, riots, and run-ins with wild animals. So basically, Comprehensive pretty much covers you in case you decide to drive through the set of an action-adventure movie. The final type of coverage is for people who won't see this video and are foolish enough to drive either with not enough insurance or with no insurance at all. With uninsured and underinsured motorist coverage, you're protected in case the person who hits your car can't pay for damages or it's a hit and run accident. Alright, that's all of them. I bet some of you had no idea there are so many types of coverages for your car. It's important to understand each of these so you can decide what coverages you need to best protect yourself. But don't try to sneak by with as little insurance as possible. At the very least, you should have a minimum of $100,000 of bodily injury protection per person and $300,000 of protection per accident. Oftentimes, accidents cost far more than the minimum required by most states. And remember, there are a lot of auto insurance companies out there, so do your research and find out who can give you the best deal and who has a good record of dealing with customers. Never choose on price alone. You need to make sure the company is financially stable and deals well with their customers. One of the best ways to protect yourself from getting involved in an accident is to make sure you're not distracted while driving. Recently, cell phone use, and especially texting, has become one of the greatest causes of accidents. Use some common sense, put the phone down, and drive. Alright, I think you're ready to hit the road. To learn more about auto insurance, check out the Insurance Information Institute's website at www.triplei.org. Take care and drive safe. The price you pay for auto insurance can vary by hundreds of dollars each year depending on what type of car you drive, your accident history, and the insurance company who provides your policy. Here are seven ways to help you save money. Ask about discounts. For example, you may qualify for discounts if you haven't had any accidents or moving violations in the past three years. Get multiple quotes. Rates can vary greatly and they change often. Review your coverage at least annually and get multiple quotes from different insurance companies. Reduce coverage on older cars. You may consider dropping collision and or comprehensive coverage on older cars. For example, if your car is worth less than 10 times the annual premium, purchasing the coverage may not be cost effective. Ask for a higher deductible. By requesting higher deductibles, you can lower the cost of your premium. Bundle your insurance. You can often get a break if you buy two or more types of insurance from the same provider. Compare insurance costs. You may have always dreamed of driving a muscle car, but your insurance premiums could become a nightmare. On the other hand, some companies offer a discount if you drive a hybrid or low-profile car. Before you buy a new or used car, check into the insurance costs. Maintain a good credit record. Most insurers use credit information as a factor in pricing auto insurance policies. By establishing a solid credit-based insurance score, you can cut your insurance costs. So, you're going on vacation? And you're going to rent a car. What should you do? Because the car rental company is going to try to sell you insurance. First thing, check with your insurance company to see what's covered on your auto policy. Second, call the credit card company that you're going to use to pay for the car. Because they may be covered other both of those. I then have attached another article for you to read to really get a much better understanding um, of that topic. Next situation we're going to look at, life situation, because remember the first one is you have a car. The next situation is you rent an apartment. What's the risk? Well, 
Someone steals or damages your stuff. Fire or other physical damage to your stuff. That could be water damage, fire damage, smoke damage, any number of, of things. What if the place you live in is destroyed and you have no place to live? You're going to need to find temporary space to live until you can find something more permanent or move back in. Someone accuses you of causing injury or damage in your apartment. That's the personal liability. Bodily injury type insurance, such as insurance, but bodily injury, such as we saw in the auto insurance. Someone is accidentally injured at your place. This does happen. Let's take a look. Firemen responded to an apartment fire a little after 11 o'clock last night. Fire officials say it happened at 2816 Partridge Drive, Apartment A. They say it was a kitchen fire, but aren't sure exactly what caused the fire at this point in time. Two adults were displaced, and fire officials guessed there was around $20,000 worth of damage. There was water and smoke damage to the apartment next door, but thankfully no one was living in that apartment. Two firemen were injured and treated on scene. No other injuries were reported in relation to this fire. One resident describes her horrifying experience when she first realized the complex was on fire. Well, I woke up to go get me a cold pop, and then I thought somebody was barbecuing. I said, oh, Lord Jesus, it's a fire. <laughs> then I ran out. I didn't grab no shoes or nothing, Jesus. I ran for my life, and then the smoke got me. I got bronchitis. Ain't nobody got time for that. According to the apartment manager, the fire started in a woman's home who is wheelchair bound. She was treated for smoke inhalation at a local hospital. There were no other reports of injuries. The Red Cross is helping those families displaced by the fire. Landlords generally do not cover a tenant's belongings. That's up to you. Now, what's the potential impact of the risk? Well, you don't have your computer your smartphone, your bed, your furniture, your 50 inch, your Blu-ray, etc. It would cost money. It would cost money to replace. So if you had to go out and buy a new laptop, that's risk. Okay? Uh, if you have a new tablet, any clothes, etc., you need money to replace them. Other people could be injured and you could be held at f responsible for those costs. What if you don't have the money? What if you only take that emergency fund you've been saving for, and that has to be used for that? Other liability for damages. So when we look at this, there is risk associated with having an apartment. Step three, decide how risk can be minimized. Don't rent. Live at home with your parents. Don't have stuff. Have insurance. Self-insure. Bear the risk yourself. That's essentially not having insurance. You're bearing the risk. You need to look at the different aspects and then choose the correct one for you based on your situation. When we look at renter's insurance, it covers personal property protection. Uh, it's your valuables. Okay, It's going to replace them. Reimbursement for living expenses. Okay, That this will help pay for increased living costs. Uh, renting a hotel room, food, temporary clothing, that type of thing. So reimbursed living expenses can be a big thing because remember, once you're out of that apartment, you don't have any place to, to live. Um, and if you're not in the city where you have family or friends, this could be even more complicated. Other thing it covers, liability protection, helps cover you if someone sues you after being injured at your place, that you're negligent. Guest medical protection, helps if somebody incurs medical expenses from an injury suffered at your place. They tripped over your coffee table. Well, you could get renter's insurance. This renter's insurance is really two types. The first one is actual cash value. This pays to replace your possessions minus a deduction, a reduction for depreciation up to the limit of your policy. So basically, what it's going to say, you bought a $1,000 tablet two years ago and it's going to last five years so it's only worth six hundred dollars. Now that's actual cash value. The one that I would recommend 
and most people have is replacement costs. And this replace pays for the actual cost of replacing your possessions so that it will replace that tablet that you bought. No deduction for depreciation up to the limit of your policy. Now, I'm using this limit to the policy because as we talked in the other section, there's limits of coverage. How much is the dollar amount that will be paid? Okay, and you're going to pay a premium for that coverage. What's covered? Well, there's most policies will have specific things that are covered or not covered. If you have any high-priced items, jewelry, silver, or anything like that, jewelry can be a big piece, or high-tech equipment, that you have to get what's called a rider, which is an additional cost. And you, in turn, pay a premium to the insurance company for taking out your risk. So you've transferred your risk to the insurance company. You can bundle this with insurance policies and this will get you discounts. When we look at renter's insurance, let's look at a factor two. Only 34% of renters have insurance, but they got stuff. It's relatively inexpensive relative to the risk that's protection and it reduces your auto insurance. In fact, many times you will find that the reduction in the cost of auto insurance will actually pay for your renter's insurance. And remember, you, you're just starting out, so you bought stuff, you're building that emergency fund. You couldn't afford to have to replace something. If somebody steals your laptop, your tablet, you, you don't have the money sitting aside to replace that. You don't want to go out and use your credit card and pay interest in debt. Um, it's silly. Inexpensive relative to the risk. You need to inventory your goods, do receipts and pictures. Uh, we have an article on renter's insurance that will, will help you. Uh, but the other thing, and I think this is really neat, and what I would uh, have you do, what is stuff worth? If you follow the link here, stop, follow the link, um, what's your stuff worth? Take a look at what it is now, but just imagine you're in that first apartment. How much are you going to pay for different things? So I'd like you to, what's your stuff worth? Okay, and that you'll find will go into the next discussion forum. Now, related issues around this, where you're living. Well, homeowner's insurance is similar but much more complicated because you're protecting the actual building as well as the content. Since the majority of you will not be buying a house in the first few years after graduation, we're not going to cover them there. I do, since everybody here hopes to be very, very successful, and I know you will, is there's an article from yesterday's Wall Street Journal on flood insurance for high-end homes. So take a look at that, and this is part one and we will then move on. This is the first two situations that we're going to look at. Uh, I'd like you now to go on to part two, where we're going to look at some more life situations.